Hey, what's up, everybody? I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I hope you're choosing God and you're putting Him first above everything else. You know, we think about all the things the world offers, whether that's in money, and drugs, alcohol, sexual sin, and anything. And how every time we keep going back to it over and over and over again and we always try to find more joy in it and every time you have to keep going back and back and back and you never find true joy God created us to be for him to love him God suppressed some of his power so we may have the free will to love him or not does that mean that God wants evil for you? No. That's why he said don't eat of the tree of good and evil. Because he doesn't want you to know what good and evil is. But we did. And every day we suffer more deaths, more pain, more sorrow, more depression, more suicides, more wars happen because we reject God is it because God hates us no it's because God loves us and he wants us to have a relationship with him if you want to find peace today you will only find it in him you know I think about how God has changed my life even though sometimes I've drifted away from God and made mistakes I should have never had never, never done I think about how he's completely changed my life and how I have a purpose. When I'm weak, he makes me strong. Let me ask you a question to all of y'all that are listening today on this video. Do you have peace? Is the author of peace the Lord of your life? Or is it the world? You know, I think about it when I got to, when I got to camp two years ago and I got saved. I think about how I was in the, that the author of confusion, Satan, who was leading me down the wrong path and how uh, I got there. And when Jesus convicted my heart and told me to turn from my wicked ways and to turn to him, how the author of confusion no longer had power. And he changed my life. Don't you want to be a conqueror through Jesus Christ? Don't you want to be victorious through Jesus Christ? Jesus loved you so much that he was willing to die on the cross as a man. Even though he was God, as a man, he was willing to die so you may be saved. There's no greater love than that. A lot of people think they find love in the world. We live in a world today where they think homosexuality and the Pride Month stuff and the Pride is true love. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but that is not true love. That is from Satan himself. If Satan wants to use love, he'll use it to look good. We see in the world that evil's starting to look good and that good is starting to look evil. And this is exactly what the Bible talks about in Revelations in the end times. Everything the Bible talks about is happening right now. And people don't believe. Because in the Bible it says that Satan is the author of confusion. While Jesus is the author of peace. He wants to confuse people into thinking that God is not real, even though there's so much evidence that He is real. But anyways, I hope all of y'all are having a great day. I hope y'all's family is doing great at anything in your life. I know we all have to work and pay the bills and stuff, and I hope y'all are all doing great. But I hope y'all are all y'all are putting your trust in Jesus more important, most importantly, that He is first in your life. That's who you think about a lot. That's who you spend time with the most. You know, Jesus says, either you love one or you despise one. 
We have to be willing to love God more than anything else because we only can serve one master. Either that's in the world or for God. But anyways, um, I was reading uh, Romans chapter 12 yesterday and I read Romans chapter, uh, chapter 13 today. And it was talking about how, you know, we as Christians, we are called to go out and love. We're called to go out and have peace and we're called to go show and be an example to put the armor of God in ourselves that the armor of light lives through us so we have the power over darkness. And I was reading that in Romans chapter 13 and 12 and how it said that save vengeance for me. And I looked at that verse and it said that God said save vengeance for him. And let me tell you, that is a hard verse to follow, isn't it? It is hard to save vengeance for God. Don't, don't we want to have vengeance again against the people who persecute us for believing in Jesus? Yeah, we do. We want to have vengeance because vengeance is what is in our natural heart. We are born in sin. We are born separated from God. We are born to sin and do sinful things. Is that what God wanted for us? No. But we are born separated from God. But because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross, we are able to be born again through Him and have a relationship with the Creator of the earth and the eternal God who loves you. But before we get started, we're going to be reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. And then we're going to go to Romans chapter 12, and we're going to read about the last 10 verses. But before we get started... I ask that we all pray. And before, before I pray, I have one question for y'all. How's your prayer life? Are you praying daily? Every morning, every night? Are you just praying for yourself? Or are you praying for others as well? Are you just praying for your own self-righteousness? Or are you praying for the glory of God? I want you to think about that today as well. Because let me tell you something. You know what Satan can't stand? When you give glory to God. He can't stand that. When you give glory to God, he gets mad. You know why? Because when you're not serving the world and you're not serving the sin in the world, you're not serving him. And this is exactly what keeps us away from God is our pride. When we want to serve our own self-righteousness and we don't want to serve God, we're actually not only serving our own self-righteousness, but we are serving Satan himself. Because that is exactly what he wants is for you to ignore Jesus Christ. So remember that today. Are you giving glory to God? throughout your life or you're giving glory to Satan remember Satan has no power over you you have Jesus Christ in you. I was reading in Romans chapter 13 today and it says it said that everything that God owns every power is in him Satan has no power over God and God has power over everything God loved you so much that he was willing to suppress his power and walk by humility so you may have free will. Remember that. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your vengeance. Lord, that your conviction, which is your vengeance, led me to Christ. And I pray, Lord, that the other ones that are listening today, Lord, that they understand that you are just that you are loving and you have a plan for their life. Lord, I pray that we as followers of Christ that we go out and spread the gospel as much as we can in the end times because we're living in the end times right now. Lord, the world is getting worse and worse every day. Evil is looking good while you are looking evil and you are being persecuted and being thrown under the bus. Lord, help us to be strong. Help us to be more than conquerors. They might kill us physically own spiritually. Lord, help us to understand your word today. Help us to honor it, help us to respect it, and help us to apply it to our lives. 
and help us to believe. Lord, get the unbelief out of our heart, Lord. I pray for any soul, any heart that has listened today, maybe they have never came to you. Well, Lord, you say there is no evidence on what will be tomorrow. So I pray, Lord, that they make that decision because we never know what tomorrow will be like. Lord, help them to realize that they will have a purpose through you, that their self-righteousness is not enough, but you are victorious. Lord, that you conquered death, hell, and the grave. Lord, you have salvation and a purpose, and you will make us conquerors. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. But anyways, I wanted to share this with y'all today because a lot of people ask the question, why do we believe, why do people believe in God if God doesn't destroy evil? And other people ask the question, well, I don't believe in God because I can't physically see him with my own eyes. And let me tell you all something. For the past year or two, not only have I been spreading the gospel, but I have been learning and I've been learning how to answer questions like that. Because I think about how many times in my life when I go out and spread the gospel, because that's what exactly what God has called me to, God has called me to do, I have to be willing to have the ability to answer the questions. Does that mean I'm going to know everything? No. Does that mean I'm going to know everything about God's questions? No. But God will give me the ability to answer them. And let me tell y'all, when we go out and spread the gospel, we have to be willing to give a good answer. The Holy Spirit will help you with those answers, but most importantly, we have to be willing to get into God's word and read his word this is, this is exactly where all the answers are at whether that's answering to a believer or an unbeliever but anyways I ask all of y'all if you can turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 33 we're going to be reading one verse from this, the, this book and this chapter and I wanted to share this verse with y'all today because God has been laying it on my heart for the past week to share it with y'all and I think about how Satan attacks. And he's very smart about it. Because he does not attack as Satan. He attacks as an angel of light. But not only that, he attacks to confuse people. And we're going to be reading that in verse 33. You ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. It says, it says For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Let me tell you something right now. God is not here to confuse you. When you start to doubt God and you start to say, oh, is God really real? If God really loves me, why does he let evil happen? If God is really perfect, then why do these things happen? And the explanation of this, how can I explain this? Let me tell y'all about a professor that was in college. I was watching a video the other day about this and there was a guy who said he called himself a Christian he was running around and uh, he preached God's word and he believed in God but then he started going to this uh, the school the school and the school believed in evolution and believed in the Big Bang Theory and the Big Bang Theory and evolution and they they tried to confuse his mind and they did and now no longer he is a Christian and now he is an atheist and now he believes in nothing nothing let me ask you a question if you have some common sense in your life do you think that you came from nothing no you didn't come from nothing. You know how I can prove that God is real? In two simple words. You ready? Order, design. Are y'all ready? If the world and creation and the universe has to begin, there has to be a cause. Let me say that again. If the universe has to begin, 
There has to be a cause. There has to be a creator of the universe. We don't come from nothing. We don't. That's what the Big Bang Theory is. Is we believe that we came from nothing. It just popped up. No. That's not how it works. And this is what I'm talking about. Satan is the author of confusion. When Jesus Christ came to die on the cross. And he came to die for us. He made it peaceful. He made it simple for us to believe in. When he came and he died on the cross and he resurrected the day, he said, believe in me, follow me, go sin no more, and you will have eternal life. He didn't make it confusing. He didn't make it hard to understand. He made it so easy to understand that a dumb person can understand it. He says it in the Bible, and I'll share that verse with you all some other day. But he made it that easy to accept it. It's very easy to understand how we were created because it's all in this book. There's a reason why we have God's word to understand who God is. And let me say that again. For, for a universe has to have a beginning, so it has to have a cause. I want y'all to remember that. Let me say it again. A universe has to have a beginning, which means it has to have a cause. And we read in verse 33, it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, and in all the churches of the saints. God is here to give you peace. God is here to make it simple for you. Believe in me. Follow me. You know what makes it hard to be a Christian? Y'all ready? It is not God making it hard for you. It's Satan and evil and sin. When you were serving God and you realize that God is the author of peace and the author of your life, Satan and his demons and his powers and his principalities will do everything in their power to try to put you down and destroy your relationship. When that professor believed in God and he said he was a Christian, Satan did everything in his power to get him not to believe, and guess what? He succeeded. How do we prevent that? Well, we'll remember that God is the author of peace, and Satan is the author of confusion. When that, when that professor was in, the, in that place and they were trying to brainwash him about how God is not real and evolution is real and the Big Bang Theory is real, that was Satan working in his mind trying to confuse him. That is Satan's plan is to confuse people, whether they believe or not. His ultimate plan is to destroy your life and never, never give you the thought on Jesus if he's real or not. Whether that's believing in Islam, whether that's believing in nothing. Whether that's believing in Buddhism, or that's believing in nothing. Whether that's believing in some other religion, or that's believing in nothing. His plan is to keep you away from the author of peace, which is Jesus Christ. That's all he cares about. You know why? Are you, are you listening? You know why he, don't, he wants to do that? Because every single time you put your trust in Jesus, you have power over Satan. You have power over Satan. When Satan was prideful, he got kicked out of heaven. And you know what Satan is going to do now? Is he's going to do the exact same thing. He's going to be prideful and he wants you to serve him. He wants to be better than God. And that's Satan's mind. His mind right now, even though he got kicked out of heaven, he thinks he's better than God. But when Jesus Christ died on the cross and resurrected the third day, Satan was scared. He was scared. And he was, he was shocked. You know what Satan's words were, uh, were when he resurrected that day? He says, Satan in his mind, you know what he probably said? Are you listening? Oh, I've lost. He's lost, boys and girls. He's lost. And his plan is to confuse you so you don't have victory over him. 
He'll use the excuse, oh, God is not real. He'll use the excuse, oh, you can be better than God. Or he can use the excuse, oh, believe in Buddhism or Islam. Or you can use the excuse, oh, evolution and the Big Bang Theory is real. All these things that Satan will use. Satan is the author of lies. He's the author of murdering. That's all he cares about. He's a liar, a liar. Nothing out of his mouth, nothing out of his heart, nothing out of anything is, is loving, true or not. It's very simple. Whether people believe in God or not, they do have the mindset that believing in Satan or a demon, nothing is good about them. So if nothing is good about Satan or demons, then what do you think he's going to do to keep you away from Jesus Christ? What do you think he's going to do? He's going to do everything to lie and lie and lie. Not only that, the universe has a beginning, so there has to be a cause. Let me pull some other evidence out that God is real. Y'all ready? In our own DNA, they have found the letter, G, the, the, the word G-O-D. What a coincidence. They found that. Now, what do you think Satan's going to do? He's going to do everything in his power to what? Lie about it. So he's going to suppress the truth and he's going to keep it away for the whole world to know. Let's use another piece of evidence. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let's use another piece of evidence. There is evidence that they have found Jesus' blood. It has different chromosomes than a regular human being. It, it has different chromosomes. And they found his blood and it was alive. And guess where they found it at? Under a cross. What a coincidence. Let's use another piece of evidence. They have found Sodom and Gomorrah. They have found Noah's Ark. They have found Mount Sinai. They have found where Moses hit the rock with the staff. They have found all these things that the Bible talks about. So what do you think Satan's going to do? Lie about it. And suppress the truth. You know what's the cool thing when I learned about when they found Sodom and Gomorrah? When God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he said that he brought brimstone and fire down to destroy it. Now, you know what's interesting about the sulfur they found when it was in Sodom and Gomorrah? Nothing grew there. And not only that, nothing that grew there, but the sulfur they found was white instead of yellow. And you know what white sulfur comes from? It doesn't come from this earth. Whoa. Well, guess what it came from? It came from heaven. So you know what Satan's going to do, y'all? I'm going to answer it again. All he's going to do is lie. And he's going to try to suppress the truth. The reason why the truth is hated in this world is two reasons. One, Satan suppresses it. And number one, it convicts hearts. We are born separated from God. And we are born selfish. And we want to do everything that is not of God. Because we are sinful. But Jesus and his son... I ask all of y'all if you can, turn to Romans chapter 12. Another evidence. More evidence in Romans chapter 12 right here that, is God, that God is real. You know what's the difference between a Christian and an unbeliever? Ones that believe in God or not. A Christian has the power to overcome evil with good. But an unbeliever has no power to overcome evil. Let's read in verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with a brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Now let me stop here. What do you notice about every true Christian? They're loving. They're merciful. They give glory to God. They don't give them glory to themselves. So guess what? You know what's the difference between a Christian and an unbeliever? The Christian is going the opposite way of the world while the unbeliever is going towards the world. All right, let me use some more evidence that God is real. I'm going to keep hitting y'all with the evidence. No matter how much how much y'all unbelief or whatever you believe or not, there is so much evidence that God is real. Let me use some more evidence. Y'all ready? If the world is in the right place, then why is it getting worse? 
But then why is the Christians, the ones that are going the opposite way of the world, they're leading more people to Christ that have more joy and leading people away from death and depression. Depression. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about eternally. You know what gets people to kill themselves? Right in the heart. Jesus says, wherever your treasure's at, your heart is also. Remember that. Whatever you spend your time with is exactly where your heart's going to be. So there's more evidence that God is real. If you have your treasure living in the world and sex, so your heart will be there, and that's how your heart fails, and then soon enough, you will decide to kill yourself because your heart is stuck in sin. So if the world is getting worse and worse, then why do we put our trust in the world? Instead of God, what we were creating. So well, let's keep reading. Not slothful in busyness, verse, verse 11. In spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patience, tribulation, continuing instant prayer. You, want, you know what's more evidence that God is real? Listen, as a Christian, they have hope. They have patience. They have the power to overcome tribulation. And they have the power to continually pray and give glory to God. Let's keep reading more evidence. Verse 13, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality. Bless them which that persecute you. Bless and curse not. You know what's the difference between a Christian and an unbeliever? We have the power to bless the ones that persecute us while the unbeliever wants vengeance back. You ready? Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. When somebody's weak and somebody's struggling, we as Christians have the power to help them out. Next, verse 16, be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but conceding to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own consents. Recommence to man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as lieth in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, it is thy enemy's hunger. Feed him, if he thirst. Give him drink. For in so doing that though, shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You know what's the difference and more evidence that God is real? Y'all listening? When somebody's hungering, we're willing to feed them even though we don't want to. And you know what's the difference between a Christian and an unbeliever? A Christian understands what just, just is, while an unbeliever will look at just and never find justiceness. They won't be able to justify anything, but a Christian can. More evidence that God is real. Y'all listening? I'm going to keep saying that word. Are you, I'm going to keep saying it. More evidence that God is real? Love that a Christian has is eternal, but the love of the world points towards sin, which it will die. More evidence that God is real. In America, we have over 50% of divorces in America. I wonder why. Because love is what? When you live in the world, it is not eternal. So what do you think is gonna happen after they get married for five years and they decide to divorce each other. So much proof. Let me tell you, if you're listening tonight, I know your heart's getting convicted because Jesus wants a relationship with you because he loves you. God has a plan for your life, whether you believe in him or not but it's your choice to respond. It says in the Bible, he'll sit there and knock at the door over and over. The question is, are you willing to open it? You know, the problem with most Christians is they won't give you evidence that God is real. By using his word, by using hard questions that people ask. But also the problem is, is that most Christians like to judge and I don't set a good example. And let me tell you, I'm sorry, y'all, 
that people out there they call themselves Christians and they set a bad example and you look at those people and you say well if they really were the true eternity then they wouldn't be acting like that and you're right well let me tell you something they're not true Jesus mentions many times in the Bible about false prophets and he is right on that because there's a lot of them so let's go into prayer Lord Jesus, you have the power to overcome evil with good. You created us, but there had to be a beginning, which there had to also be a cause. We didn't come from nothing. We have to be stupid in our mind to think that we came from nothing. That is dumb. Makes zero sense, God. We have to believe that we have came from something which was you and there had to be a cause because there was a, a beginning. The first words in the Bible says, in the beginning God created. Oh, what a coincidence, God. You love us so much. Help us to give the love back. Just a little bit. Because we know our love is not as great as yours. But you living inside of us will give us the love that is eternal. Lord, we want suicides to stop. We want pain to stop. We want tribulation to stop. We can all overcome that with you. We want divorces to stop and we can all overcome that with you. I pray, Lord, that you touch hearts here tonight and I know you did. Pray, Lord, that they give their life to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless y'all. Most importantly, remember, are you victorious today? Do you know the living God? When you come to face to face with the living God one day, are you going to look at him and say, I loved you? on this earth when you come to face to face with the God with God are you gonna know that you're going to heaven you might be judged but you will be free from punishment if you have a relationship with him do you know Jesus today as he washed all your sins away and destroyed all of them can you make the decision Give him the glory he deserves. Honor and respect him. But most importantly, remember, in life, Satan is the author of confusion, while God is the author of peace.